Hello. Let's have a look at selecting by using luminosity, or in other words, the brightness. So you want to be able to select areas of the screen which are brighter or less bright. So the uh, simple way is via the select menu, and we then go down to tonal range when we can select by midtones, shadows, or highlights. So selecting midtones, and there's a looks like a fair number in this picture. Yeah, look at all that. Now, if I want to uh, do something like that, if I say click on here and click on curves, and the selection will be made into a mask so that the curves only affect that area. I can, because I've used that, I can now go select, deselect, or control D to get rid of the marching ants. I can see the picture. <coughs> So now, if I increase the this up or down, you can see the midterms affecting it. But what you see quite quickly if I start doing this is look at this. This just looks rather weird down here, isn't it? Because there's a very sharp edge to this. And we can see what the area has been selected by going to the icon over here and going Alt, click on that. And there we can see that there are quite sharp edges. White is the area that's selected black is not selected, and grey is in between. But this is very much a black and white picture, which means it is very sharp selection. So that's not so great, is it? You know, it's, it, it's limited in what it can do. We can click back out here, the control the curves disappear, select, we can bring them back up again. <clears throat> in other words, using this is good for little tweaks up and down, but not for doing large amounts, because then it just starts to look funny. So let's delete that and try the others. Just have a quick look at them. Tonal range, shadows, and I'm going to go right click here, left click this, right, and curves. There we go. And if I control D to get rid of those and Alt click on this, then now the white areas here are the shadows that are being selected. And again, quite hard edges to this. So when we go back here and bring up the curves, we're going to get it, it rather weird at the edges again. Look at this. So, so I try to turn up the shadows here. It only works if you do it just a little bit. And just for completeness, look at tonal range and highlights. <coughs> and not so much here because this picture's more got more highlights. Sorry, more mid-tones and shadows, not so many highlights. And um, we'll do a putting the curves again. And Alt click on that, Control D to get rid of those. Yeah, see the white bits here now indicating the highlights. And there aren't so many in this. So that when we do this again, we can turn this up and down. Oops, let's go select that back first, haven't we? Which means we could then double click this and bring that back again. So now we can turn up and down the highlights, but it's you know only a little bit being affected. More interesting way to do this. Uh, which can be quite useful, is to control and shift and click on the background here, but click on, in other words, the icon of the image you're working on with. And you gain some sort of selection coming up here. So let's have a look at this in doing a, putting the curves. And if we alt click on the curves adjustment and control D to get rid of the marching ants, it looks like we've got a black and white picture, which is kind of what we have. But what it's doing is it's how much is selected because this is a mask it means the whiter areas are selected more and the darker areas are selected less. So in other words, this is more for the highlights and less for the darks. So now if we go here, bring up the curves dialog. So if we turn this up, there we go. It's a much smoother change, and we can go quite a long way before it starts, you know, before it starts to moan and look a bit strange 
you, know, you can even go for, you know, look right up there. That's you know, yeah, you're burning out some stuff, but it's it's not too bad. What we can do as well is this curves area adjustment here is in mask, so I can invert it. So I can say layer and invert. And now I got a different effect. So I go back to the normal here. And now, in fact, let's just show you. So if I uh, Alt click on that, here you've got an, an, a negative. If I Control I, to, which I can do a shortcut, back to the original Control I, invert to a negative. So in other words, the whiter areas now are selected more, which are the shadows, and the darker areas, which are the lighter areas, are not selected so much. In other words, we play with this now, and we're going to get the darks being affected, so more than the lights, but tapered all the way through. So if I pull this up gradually here, I can see that it's bringing light into the darkness. So under the bridge and everything, or I'm darkening the picture right down there, which I might do if I, the picture was over light. So this is a much more useful thing, a way I, I find to just affect the, the brightness of the picture overall, but focusing more on one than the other. And of course, you can use all the other adjustments as well, because you've got a selection, which you can turn into a mask, and there's lots of other things that you can do. There are other things we can do as well, um, which is going to be, for example, through the blend ranges up here. I'm going to do that in a different video, because blend ranges is another game altogether. It's a very powerful, it's like Splendid from Photoshop on steroids. It is fabulous. But this is a really good thing that you can do here as well. Right, that's enough for now. So thank you very much for watching.